Waltansa Nuaku Magantik, Katamska Tenua Gakiao, Anotskagi Sagak, Natoki Topi Natsigas and Muskegsi Oche, Chief Billy Morin, White Eagle, Sacred Rider is my name, and welcome everybody to the Enoch Cree Nation. Uh, I'm very proud to be here on this announcement today, and uh, it's really good to see three levels of government participating in this announcement um, for, for our community members, for our nation members, for Albertans, for Edmontonians, and just all Canadians at the end of the day, all of our relations, all treaty peoples. But I'm also very proud to stand here today as the founding government of this uh, land that we call home and on behalf of First Nations I want to just say I'm very proud and again honored to stand by my counterparts in other levels of government to make this important announcement today. Uh, first up we're gonna have uh, my good friend and he is kind of a big deal now uh, MP Randy Bossino uh, for Edmonton Centre and uh, Randy is here to explain on behalf of the federal government on why we are here, gathered here today and so the Associate Minister of Finance, the Minister of Tourism an all-around great guy. I'm just glad to be standing on this podium along with my other colleagues at government to make this important announcement today. So I turn the mic over to Randy. Well, thanks very much, uh, Chief Mooring. Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Thank you for that uh, kind introduction. It's always great to be home and see so many familiar faces. Tanse, bonjour, tawau. That means guests, you are welcome. There is room here. Moscow, kehiyu, netzegasun. My name is Randy Boston. I'm the Minister of Tourism and Associate Minister of Finance, but I'm also known as Strong Eagle Man in the Cree community. And I'm delighted to be here at Enoch Cree Nation, Chief. And I would like to acknowledge the territory that we are on is on Treaty 6 lands. And I'd like to recognize Chief Billy Morin uh, for your hospitality and your partnership across so many files on behalf of your people and on behalf of Indigenous peoples in this part of Turtle Island. I would also like to thank uh, RMA Rural Municipality Association President uh, Paul McLaughlin, President McLaughlin, for being here with us today. It's a wonderful opportunity and a great honor to be here on behalf of Minister Hutchings, Goody Hutchings, who is the Minister of Rural Economic Development, and to join Minister Nate Glubish, Minister of Service Alberta, for an announcement that will help connect Albertans. We all know that access to high quality, high speed internet is essential. Connectivity impacts all sectors of the economy, including, I would emphasize, our tourism sector. We learned this all too well as the COVID-19 pandemic has shifted so much of our lives online. Le gouvernement du Canada est conscient de cette transition et le gouvernement s'est engagé à brancher tous les Canadiens et Canadiennes à Internet de haute vitesse d'ici 2030. And we have backed, this, uh, backed up this commitment with action, with our government investing $7.2 billion dollars to build out high-speed internet infrastructure, including nearly $3 billion through the Universal Broadband Fund. Le gouvernement investit 7,2 milliards de dollars dans l'infrastructure internet de haute vitesse, et cela comprend près de 3 millions de dollars par l'entremise du Fonds pour la large band universelle. Je suis très heureux de dire que nous réalisons des progrès. Already, 182,000 households, including 17,000 in Alberta, have been connected thanks to this federal government. But we know the work is not done. More than 200,000 rural and remote households in Alberta remain without access to high-speed internet. This includes 80% of all indigenous households and 67% of all, all rural households in this province. I can tell you that when my niece and nephews come over to my place from Morinville and get to use the high-speed Wi-Fi, their reaction to its speed says it all and the smiles on their faces. And the time has come to fix this for all Albertans. And so we are going to ensure that we're going to close this connectivity gap and ensure that every corner of Alberta and Canada has access to fast and reliable high-speed internet. And that is exactly what brings us here today. I am proud to announce that the Government of Canada will be contributing $150 million in a joint dollar-for-dollar Canada-Alberta partnership for a total combined funding of $300 million to bring high-speed internet to un underserved rural, remote and Indigenous communities in Alberta. 
Je suis fier d'annoncer que le gouvernement du Canada versera 550 millions de dollars dans le cadre d'un financement conjoint dollar pour dollar Canada-Alberta pour une somme totale pouvant atteindre jusqu'à 300 millions de dollars afin d'offrir l'Internet haute vitesse aux régions rurales et éloignées et les communautés autochtones mal desservies de l'Alberta. The Canada-Alberta Broadband Partnership will accelerate high-speed access throughout our wonderful province. This is great news for Albertans, and the Government of Canada is pleased to work with the Government of Alberta to make it happen. Because high-speed Internet is no longer a luxury, it's a necessity. So my congratulations to everyone who made this partnership possible. Je félicite tous les gens qui ont été connectés à ce partenariat. Vous améliorez les vies des gens ici en Alberta, et c'est un grand moment pour le Canada et l'Alberta. I now am delighted to pass the podium over to my colleague, Minister Glubish. Minister? Cheers. Well, thank you, Minister Boissonneau. Uh, this is definitely an exciting time, and I'm so pleased to share this stage with you and Chief Warren and President McLaughlin um, for this great announcement. Thank you. Um, so thanks also to the, the folks at the River Cree Resort uh, and again Chief Warren for hosting us here today. Um, so uh, for all the reasons that Minister Boston was shared, Albertans need access to reliable high-speed internet and we know that rural, remote and indigenous communities across the province uh, need significant relief in that regard. And uh, so we, the Alberta government has been having conversations across Alberta about this for the last two years. Uh, the pandemic certainly has highlighted the need, accelerated the, the need to, to make this happen. And uh, Alberta's government is committed to helping to eliminate that digital divide. Earlier this year, we made a historical commitment in improving connectivity by announcing up to $150 million of new funding to help improve broadband access in rural, remote and indigenous communities. Access to improved broadband supports Alberta's recovery plan and will help to create new opportunities for Albertans all across the province. But I've consistently said that solving the broadband problem requires all levels of government and the private sector to come together. And we have been working for many, many months with our partners at all levels. And I was so happy to be able to sign uh, this agreement with the federal government uh, in August with former Minister Monsef, and I'm looking very much forward to continuing to work uh, with my new counterparts at the federal level, including Minister Cham Champagne, Minister Hutchings, and Minister Boissonneau, who's here with us today. And I'm sure we all would have liked uh, to have been able to announce this sooner. But let me assure you that though we have waited until today, both of our governments have been working together behind the scenes uh, on some very important work. Uh, our partnership began in these conversations prior to signing this agreement and has continued after the signing as we've been reviewing hundreds and hundreds of applications in Alberta to the Universal Broadband Fund uh, in anticipation of announcing the first approvals of projects in early 2022. We are very pleased that the federal government has matched Alberta's broadband contribution dollar for dollar, bringing the total committed public funds to $300 million. When our two governments partner with the private sector, we could see this investment grow to north of $400 million. This is an extremely important first step, a very exciting first step, but it is not the last step. And this agreement leaves the door open for future collaboration between the Alberta government and the federal government. It is a framework to map out our future steps together as we continue to work on our shared goal of reaching universal connectivity. In this first stage, we can begin making significant progress at eliminating the digital divide. It is so important that we use the Universal Broadband Fund infrastructure as a partnership so that we uh, can accelerate the rollout of this $300 million of collaborative funding and also to ensure that we don't have duplication. We cannot afford to build the same infrastructure twice. We need to make sure that we optimize our investments for the benefit of all Albertans. So uh, we expect to make our first project announcements, as I said, early in 2022. And our goal is to make sure that there are shovels in the ground in this upcoming 2022 construction season. We know that Albertans have been waiting for better connectivity for many years. And our ideal situation is to achieve universal connectivity as early as 2023, 2024. However, it is more realistic that it will take another couple of years beyond that due to industry capacity to complete the work as well as the availability of the materials 
both generally speaking, but also as highlighted by the supply chain interruptions that the pandemic has introduced, uh, which has affected the global supply of fiber optic materials and electronics related to uh, the connectivity infrastructure. But let me assure you that this is a priority for our government and we will work to bring about universal connectivity quickly. So in, in closing, uh, we all can think of many of the benefits of improved connectivity. We know that it helps with economic growth. We know that it helps with economic diversification. We know that it will help with improving education outcomes and healthcare outcomes and so many more very important factors. We know that the connectivity problem in Alberta would require an investment of approximately $1 billion to solve. And this federal-provincial partnership, totaling $300 million, taken together with the private investment that will uh, accompany it, is a huge and exciting first step to tackling this problem. And I'm looking forward to each of the steps that we will take together towards expanding connectivity in Alberta. And now, I would like to invite my friend, Chief Morin, to return to the podium to deliver some remarks. Thank you, Chief. Well, thank you to my friend Nate Glubish as well, and Minister Bosno, Paul. Um, just in that other room over there is our annual Christmas gathering as a First Nation. And uh, usually we'd have about 300 members in that room. But a lot's changed over the last two years with COVID, obviously. And now we have only about half of that fully vaccinated members in that room. And just this morning, I got a call from one of my Mushams in the nation, one of the grandfathers. And he said, I can't be there. I can't be there. And what we have now adapted to, just like everybody else, is a Zoom link for all band members to participate. And he said, I can't work that Zoom. I don't have connectivity. And so real action today is making a difference just in that other room uh, for tomorrow for that, that Mushim who needs that connectivity to stay linked to his nation. He's, uh, he's at home sick. He's, uh, he couldn't be here today. He's having trouble with his Wi-Fi and his connectivity. And uh, it's actions like today that are going to allow him to participate in this new kind of world uh, post-COVID or wherever we're going as a nation, as a province, and as a community. So I'm really happy to see that. And it's a tangible benefit that I can take back into that room right after this announcement. You know, it's really actually good today. I will, I'll flip uh, channels a little bit. Uh, I think too often sometimes we're, we're brought here together to highlight some differences between federal and provincial governments, but I just want to say it's really refreshing and nice to see two levels of government working together, so hi, hi. And then the third level of government, my good friend Paul, uh, municipalities he represents. And, uh, you know, Randy mentioned 67% and 80% or roughly 80 thereabouts in First Nations community that don't have this level of connectivity. And, uh, you know, for the real municipalities, for those real Albertans, uh, we have a lot in common. And so it's good to stand up here with Paul and advocate and lobby um, to get that connectivity for Albertans. You know, the Alberta Advantage uh, means something different going forward. And, uh, you know, if the federal government, if the provincial government can work together to bring $300 million and then, as Nate mentioned, uh, get some private investment, the Alberta Advantage going forward is that connectivity or one aspect of it that's going to push Alberta to the 21st century to be that economic powerhouse that we always strive to be. So, hi, hi, and I'm very proud to be here. And uh, I want to introduce uh, Paul McLaughlin on behalf of Rural Municipalities. Well, I'll be smiling during my entire speech because this is the best Christmas gift ever. Uh, as a rural Albertan, I have to say there's, I'll use three operative words here. I'll, I'll use the word enabling, I'll talk about partnership, and I'll talk about dreams. And I think you, what you've heard today is this is an enabling investment. This is an investment to actually allow people to create ideas, innovation, and actually look for opportunities. Uh, I think partnership is the key word. We have four partners here that will make Alberta better. Uh, for our Indigenous people, they're our friends and our neighbours, and together I think we can advocate to deal with the same situation we both have, lack of connectivity. And I think that really one of the big words is opportunity. Every child in this province has the, will have this window to ideas, to opportunities, to innovation. That's how we're going to grow. And the fact is this digital divide that's existed has left some people behind. It's allowed people not to fulfill, I think the final word would be dreams. This has allowed people to not just create dreams, but actually to succeed in their dreams too. So it's extremely exciting to, for this to be the first stage. You know, back, rural electrification actually occurred back in the day. I live in an area that didn't get electricity until 1969. How they got electricity is actually all the farmers got together and they said, we're gonna, we need electricity. And they said, well, if you put up the poles, we'll connect the lines. 
And that's really what this is. This is just saying, if you put up the poles, we'll connect the lines. We will grow our communities together. We've learned we can't do this apart. We've got to do this together, and we need to move forward too as well. I have to say extremely thank you, thank you for the investment you've made, the understanding that this enabling investment is how we will grow, how we'll change our future, and how we will as communities will actually take on the future and be future focused. So thank you so much. On behalf of rural Alberta, I'll have to say you've helped me tremendously. As the president of the rural municipalities of Alberta, you would think agriculture, you would think health care, you think ambulance is my number one item. It's broadband connectivity is the number one item. And thank you so much for helping us reach our goals. Appreciate that. And thank you, Chief, for hosting us today. Much appreciated. Thank you. All right, that brings us to the question and answer portion of our announcement today. And why don't we start on the phones operator? Can you put through the first caller, please? Yes, first question is from Wyatt Sharp. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Hi there. Uh, my question is going to be for Minister Bois to know. Um, thank you for taking my question. Um, I'm just wondering, obviously, your government has made promises, not just in Alberta, for uh, rural connectivity issues and trying to expand connectivity, but with other provinces as well. Um, you mentioned it briefly here today, as well as some of the other people who gave remarks, but maybe you can speak a little bit about how you can take some of these promises that you are making and, and previous policy announcements and turn them into action. Well, I really appreciate the, the question, Wyatt, and I think $7.2 billion speaks for itself, about $3 billion just in the Universal Broadband Fund. It's about finding proponents, it's about finding projects, it's about getting homes connected. And um, I saw a stat in my speech and then I went through uh, what I learned in another briefing and I can tell you that already about $45 million has been invested in Alberta on 48 projects representing some 35,000 households. So those are people like my brother and sister-in-law and their kids who live outside of Morinville in a, on an acreage in River Kabar so that they can be connected to broadband. We want to see that happen across the province. We want to see that across the country. We got to bring those stats down. It's not acceptable to have 80% of Indigenous communities without connectivity or 67% of rural Canada without connectivity. And I mean, Paul said it. This is an enabling uh, investment. Uh, we are here in the spirit of partnership with the provincial government and with proponents. We believe in opportunities for all Albertans and all Canadians, and that's what today represents. And Wyatt, do you have a follow-up? I do, yeah. And um, I also just wanted to ask, um, Bill C-2 just passed in the House of Commons at third reading, um, yet obviously passed the support of the Liberals and the Bloc Québécois, um, but there were obviously the Conservatives voted against it, and uh, I believe the majority of the members in the NDP. So um, maybe just your overall reaction to the bill being passed, and also maybe you can speak a little bit about what needs to be done to ensure that you can have the NDP support on future financial bills. Well, Wyatt, it's um, great that you mention or ask about C2 because I was insisting that I vote. I have to vote on C2, and so we made it happen here before the announcement. Look, C2 is $7.4 billion to the hardest-hit sector, the tourism sector, which in our Alberta context is the third largest economic industry in our province. We are talking about tens of thousands of people and businesses for whom their business was cut down to zero and now we need to make those supports are in place. Whether it's a lockdown support, whether it's the hardest hit sector support, there is a, a very large footprint of uh, businesses and people that we're going to be able to support through C2. Um, I have to say that I'm, I'm disappointed that the um, Conservative Party of Canada did not um, support Canadians and businesses in the tourism sector uh, when they had the opportunity to do so. The Liberal government is here We've had Canadians backs throughout the pandemic, and we will continue to do so until we are through COVID-19. Thank you. Operator, can you put through the next caller, please? Thank you. Yes, Dylan Short, Post Media. Uh, hi there. Uh, obviously, $300 million is uh, quite a bit of money, um, but as Minister Glubish said there, uh, it, it looks like it's going to be about a billion dollars to, I guess, fully complete this connectivity project. I guess, what sort of commitments are there for future investments uh, so that we can close that gap from $300 million to $1 billion? Well, thank you for the question. Um, and as I said, yes, we, we do estimate the total cost of uh, solving this problem is about a $1 billion. And uh, the combined federal and, and provincial commitment here is $300 million. And as I said earlier, uh, of course, 
there is an expectation that the private sector will participate in these projects with skin in the game as well. And so it is my belief we will see north of $400 million put to work in Alberta connectivity projects as a result of this Alberta-Canada-Alberta uh, Canada broadband partnership. Um, but as you've said, that 400, is not, uh, 400 plus is not a billion dollars. But this is an important first step. And we also, I also talked about capacity. We know that uh, there's not enough capacity to go and spend a billion dollars in one year or two years to solve this problem because there are limits in terms of supply chain, there's limits in terms of engineering expertise. Uh, and so this will give us enough runway to get the most important projects done right away in the near term and then give us better information so we can make better informed decisions together between the Alberta government and the, and the, the, the federal government to, uh, to, to, to determine what our next steps need to look like for additional funding. And the good news is that our agreement that we have signed leaves room for that future collaboration. Dylan, do you have a follow-up question? Yeah, I do. Uh, you just mentioned it there, but you know, obviously there's going to be a lot of communities that want to get involved in this, a lot of different projects that will need to be completed. Uh, I guess you, you spoke about it a little bit there, but how are you going to decide which projects need to go forward first so that you can have those good informed decisions moving forward? I guess what I'm asking is how do you decide which communities get the first uh, first uh, slice of pie, I guess, if you go on and put it that way. That's a really good question, and, and so as, as we shared earlier, uh, this partnership between the federal government and the provincial government is built upon the infrastructure of the Universal Broadband Fund, the federal program, uh, which has clear criteria outlined uh, uh, on how they will select their, their projects. And through this partnership, now the Alberta government and the federal government will work together on evaluating the applications in front of the Universal Broadband Fund. There are hundreds and hundreds of those applications. And we will work together to select those, uh, those projects that will help to accomplish our goal of universal connectivity. Uh, that's going to include elements of ensuring we get the best value for taxpayer dollars, ensuring that we get maximum impact, the largest number of households uh, for a given amount of investment, but also balancing the need for regional fairness because every corner of this province is going to need some relief and also ensuring that there, is, uh, there are Indigenous communities represented by these projects. So those are some of the criteria, and I'll just maybe let my colleague, Minister Boss, know, uh, add to that if he wishes. Dylan, thanks for the question. Um, Minister Glubish put his finger on one issue. We don't want to overheat the market by trying to do everything all in the first year. We'd get priced out, and quite frankly, we wouldn't be able to cover all the ground. So. Look, I hope to have several years uh, for this government in office. This is, you can't build a house in, in a month, so this is a, a down payment on a big project. And I just want to point people to the fact that today's announcement is not the sum total of our government's commitment to this issue. $7.2 billion is a big number, but as part of that, we have authorized $600 million to be able to get part of Telesat's satellite network that orbits the globe to make sure that those communities that cannot be connected by fiber optic are able to be connected through satellite internet. That's a, that's a significant investment into those communities because, I mean, we knew before, but COVID showed us just how much connectivity is a lifeline to critical services, to health care, and we're going to be working as a whole of government on this, not just Minister uh, Hutchings, but Minister Vandal, who's responsible for Prairies Canada, but also um, the North. He's still Minister of the North. The Minister Champagne and I will be working on this to make sure that can communities and Canadians and Albertans get the connectivity they deserve. Before we go to our next caller, I just want to make sure there are no questions on the floor here. Operator, can you put through the next caller, please? Thank you. Sherry Narine, Windspeaker. Hi, this question is for whoever can answer it. The applications for the Infrastructure Broadband Fund Will any money be put aside specifically for Indigenous businesses to develop that infrastructure? Let's, we'll follow up with the actual number. I think it's 50 million. That's the, the briefing number that I had. And so that's the initial piece of this funding announcement. I'll make sure I follow, if we follow up with you if that's not accurate. And do you have a follow-up question? Can you please? Yeah, can you please clarify what you mean by 50 million? Is that for Indigenous businesses to yes, develop absolutely. infrastructure? So it's like a set aside so that we make sure that 50 million of the current 300 million is set aside for Indigenous communities. If that number is not accurate, we'll get back to you. All right, okay, I understand we have one more question on the line. Uh, operator, can you please put through our final caller? Actually, there are no further questions on the line at this time. 
All right. In that case, that uh, brings our event today to a conclusion. Um, for the media who are on site, we will have some group photos here. If you are interested in staying around, thank you everyone for joining us.